sure to be coming back for seconds, honey. Ross, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, you come back for seconds there, I see, huh? Howdy! Well, howdy. Howdy. How's some of that prize-winning chili of yours? Well, I should say, yes, ma'am. That's my prize Texas chili. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Pancho! Take off. Ho! Ho! I'll do that for you, little lady. Here, you just give me that. Why, thank you. Put it right up there. That was delicious. Bet it takes hours to make. Hours oh, takes days. Most folks don't appreciate the art of making good chili. Quite a ranch you have here, Mr. McCormick. Well, it's better than some shack in the dust storm in Kansas. Well, by the way, my friends call me Buddy. My friends call me Angela. Angela. Which one of them lucky young bucks back there brought you here today? I came alone. I crashed your party, buddy. Well, why did you do that? If I'd known you were coming, I'd give the party in your honor. It isn't every day you can meet a man with 10,000 head of cattle. 15,000, Angela. I like a self-made man. Yeah, but you know, today most of the young folks think that's something bad. That just goes to show you that young folks today don't know everything, do they? Yeah. Yeah. How'd you like to see the spread? I'd like to. Ride a horse? That depends on the horse. How far are we going? Oh, not far, a couple of miles. What about the others? They ain't even gonna miss us till we run out of whiskey. <laughs> now, you're not gonna try and seduce me, are you, Mr. McCormick? Well, no, Angela, honey, I'd be a pretty sorry excuse for a man if I didn't try just a little bit, now, wouldn't I? <laughs> Far as I can see, it's all mine. Every rock, every tree, every blade of grass, it's all mine. I hear you started with nothing. That's right. Must have worked hard for it. Well, nobody come looking for me to give it to me, no. Amazing. You must have had some help, though. Nope, all by myself. I'll bet there's something somewhere along the way that you're ashamed of. Well, I'm not saying I didn't step on a toe or two here and there, but I don't know nothing to nobody. There must be someone, buddy, or I wouldn't be here. That thing ain't real, is it? Lady, you're good. You're awful good. I'm getting kind of slow. Perhaps a bit of both. I don't suppose we could come to some sort of arrangement? Well, that's too bad.
temperature in Los Angeles is 72 degrees with a slight overcast. Hope you have a pleasant flight. Show go. Well, I can't begin to tell you. Boring is the only word for it. These typical New York critics, pompous old ladies covered in jewelry, talking about art and things they know nothing about. And how is the mail? Oh, well, they're not so sure I can handle the job yet. You must be kidding. Didn't you show them your portfolio? You're a genius with the camera. Yeah, but honey, when they're gambling with that kind of bread, you know, they want to be sure. Well, when they give you the job, and they will. You make them pay for it. They will. Now, who do you suppose will call me this time tonight? <laughs> Probably an old boyfriend. Very funny. Hello? Listen, I'm not alone. I told you never to call me at night. Do you understand? I don't care. All right, I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> boyfriend, right? An old girlfriend. Would you like some breakfast? Just coffee, thank you. Black. You got the word that you did another excellent job. Thank you. The rest of the money's been deposited to your account, but I'm sure you know that. I had a call from Zurich this morning. Three assignments, three successes. I don't have to tell you how impressed our people are. I'd rather you didn't. 
cowboy was fat and ready. He made so much money pushing dope through Mexico, he didn't think anybody could touch him. He was easy, lady. Yeah. He's right, you know. The new one will be much tougher. You'll be expecting something. You know our arrangement, Rourke? McCormick was to be my last. That's our contract. I don't want to quibble with you, Angela. I'll let you say I'm exercising an option. No. My clients insist. Therefore, I must insist. You have a certain quality that none of my other people have. Also, if you eliminate this one for me, I promise I won't trouble you again. If I eliminate you, Rourke, I won't have any more trouble with you again, will I? Besides, Angela, the money. The money is more substantial than either of us have ever been offered before. And if I decline? I assume I'll have a problem. I wouldn't know. Who's the mark? Bain. Jeffrey Bain. You know who he is? No. He's head of one of the most powerful unions in the country. Over half a million members. Why him? This time, I want to know. The only thing you have a right to know, Angela, is the information we supply you in the packet. And any other goodies you might dig up on your own. And this one, this one has to look like an accident. So here it is. As head of a union, he's probably surrounded by an army of bodyguards. You expect me to get through them, kill him, make it look like an accident and get out alive. It's risky. It's, it's risky, I admit that. You're a master of understatement. It'll cost you 125,000. Oh. <laughs> that kind of money can accommodate five first-class assignments. Then, my dear, hire five first-class people. You do have a certain panache, Angela. Unfortunately for me, you know there isn't anyone else who can't compare with you. Why, Bane? I don't know myself. Let's just call it a conflict of interest between him and my clients. Now, do I take it we have a deal? When Zurich confirms the deposit of half the amount, I might even suffer through another meeting with you. But not with them. Done. <laughs> Tell me something, Angela. How many women do you suppose make your kind of money? Tell me something, Rock. How many men do you suppose make my kind of money?
Who is it? Are you going to take my picture? I don't take pictures, remember? I take photographs. Oh, well, photograph then. When? Well, maybe when you look a little better. Oh. Get yourself in shape. Oh. <laughs> Not fair. Well, I'll make you look okay. <laughs> hey, darling, where's your equipment? Hmm? Your equipment. Where is it? I hawked it. I sold it. Come on, I'm serious. So am I. You didn't. That's stupid. That's your life. Look, honey, it'll work out. It'll all work out. You'll see. I just needed some money and I got it. It's that simple. No! I could have helped you. Honey, I don't want your money. I want to help you. I want you to be a photographer. You love it. It's your life. I don't care if I have to help you with money now and again. I do. Look, I don't want that to destroy our relationship. Good heavens. You can pay me back later. I don't care. I'd never be able to pay you back. It took me six years to save up enough bread to buy that equipment, and I never got one job off of it. Not one. I'd be the best by now. You are the best. They just don't know it yet. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm any good at all. Doug, I... I love you. I believe in you. Angela. You're a successful artist, right? And you made it on your own. I'll make it on my own, too, or not at all. Doug, let's leave dinner till later. Mm-hmm. 
Nonsense, I insist. What would you have? Have a Chablis. Jack, Chablis. I really must apologize. No, it was my fault. No, 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 it wasn't. You know, I, uh, can't help wondering why an attractive young lady like yourself would be in a concert all alone. What makes you think I'm alone? You're sitting just in front of me. Oh, actually, I had a date. He didn't show up. Then he's a fool. Are you a musician? No. Why do you ask? Couldn't help noticing you were following the score. Oh, it happens to be my favorite Mozart quintet. Are you a musician? No, oh, no, 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 not by a long shot. Well, there was a time, though, I uh, wanted to be a concert pianist. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Well, six years of study, and I suddenly discovered I was only mediocre. It's a terrible trauma. Oh, thank you, Jack. How are you enjoying the concert? Oh, very much. I don't think I'll stay for the Beethoven, though. I only came for the Mozart. You really are a Mozart buff, huh? Mm -hmm. So am I. Well, probably I should head back in. You're not staying? No, I'm not. Thank you for the drink. It was my pleasure, Miss... DeVries. Angela DeVries. I wonder... Could you get a taxi for me, please? Mr. Reese, you don't have transportation? Uh, no, I... Of course, I... your friend never showed up. It's ridiculous. It's all right. No, Allow me. No, no, a, t a taxi oh, no, is no, no, no trouble no, no, at all. please. Oh, really? It's out of the question. I have a car and a driver, and it would be my pleasure. Have you had dinner? No, no. Then it's settled. Eddie? Yes, sir. Please. And tell Jack to bring the car around front. There. Simple, isn't it? I don't even know your name. Jeffrey Bain. How nice to meet you, Mr. Bain. when the final curtain rang down on your musical career? Well, I buried myself in my work. I, after the war, the Second World War. I've been going strong ever since. I think you're a diplomat. Why do you say that? Those terrible silent types around you. <laughs> That's marvelous, just marvelous now. No, 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 no. I'm in a union. The president of a union, actually. No. Hmm? You don't look like one. Well, what's one supposed to look like? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just say that what I look like and what I do are not necessarily compatible. What about those two, then? <laughs> they're not Secret Service. They're... They're bodyguards. Don't tell me you really need them. I thought that sort of thing only went on in movies. Uh, well, the kind of circles I travel, Angela. I meet a lot of high-powered types. Ambitious, like me. Uh, we deal with extremes. It, it all gets very rough. And so you've done it, haven't you? What? You made it. You achieved it. Oh, I've had my success. It's true enough. But uh, there is nowhere higher you can go, is there? Politics. Politics. Oh, yes, politics. Jeffrey. You know what I'd like to do tonight? I'd adore to go dancing. Oh, I usually don't go in for that sort of thing. That sort of thing is fun, and you only live once. <laughs> I haven't had this much fun in well, longer than I care to remember. Uh, are you thirsty? I'm desperate. Good. Uh, oh, waitress, what would you like? I would like two champagne cocktails. Oh, oh um, eight 
Champagne cocktail, please. Eight, sir. Did I say eight? Eight. That's what I said. That's what I want. Eight. Hey. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> would you uh, like to dance again? I would just hate it. <laughs> I really can't understand it. I should be out on my feet, but I feel fantastic. What do you think? For you. <laughs> Treasure that always. Do you know what time it is? What time is it? I had a meeting in two hours. And so? <laughs> so, Angela, you are the most remarkable girl. I let you say that to all the girls. No, 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 no. truly you are. I mean, we've only just met, and here you've got me talking and dancing and relaxing. This is a luxury I never put in myself. Angela. This has been a most welcome, a most refreshing break, an otherwise increasingly unhappy routine, and I thank you for it. I enjoyed it, Jim. Good night. Good morning. Angela, at the risk of seeming greedy, would you have lunch with me today? I'd love to, but I can't. Perhaps tomorrow. Promise? I'm fairly sure. Call. I'll reserve a table. One o'clock tomorrow, sharp. <laughs> Your tenacity is irresistible. Check on Mr. Breeze. Oh, I don't think it's necessary. Well, you want to break the pattern? Or do you think we should? Okay, okay, I guess that's what I pay you for. Why don't you ever look at me anymore? You're nice to your marks, so why not me? It's all a business deduction. <laughs> How about it? Because you made me sick. And you made a lousy lover, that's why not. You'd think they'd take better care of this pond here. I mean, how do you think I feel about you being with that half fake photographer? Don't be surprised. I know all about what's his name. You worry me sometimes, you know that? I mean, he could be a cop. He's not a cop. Yeah, I know he isn't, but he could be. Rock, after this, I'm out. You'll never let me go, will you? We have an awful lot on you. I mean, it's the nature of the beast, so to speak, you know. Look, Angela. You don't want to knock a good thing. We make a great team, you and I. I mean, what can you do with a master's in art? You take dictation. It's not my fault you have the acumen for this type of work. I trained you, no small cost to myself, and I might add, you're more than adequate, but it's not the type of thing you just up and retire on. You hear from Zurich? Kids must feed the hell out of these fish. This morning. They confirm my deposit. He's primed. It'll be about a week. You've got the weekend. The weekend? The weekend is a few days away. My clients need it done before next week. Work. I work my way. It's going to take a week. Well, you said it's got to happen this weekend. Either he dies by accident in about a week, or he's murdered this weekend. You can't have it both ways. There's an extra 25 grand in it for you this way. After that, you can take some time off, uh, travel, and join life. After this, I'm out. You understand? 
here. I wonder if these fish are any good. I mean, they aren't hard to catch. Why don't you get someone to catch one for you? I already did. I have two extra hours with you today. Yes, I put back all my appointments. And there are 13 board members sitting back there thinking that I'm out of the docks negotiating a new contract. <laughs> it isn't easy ditching Eddie. Two whole hours of my heavenly Angela the Breeze, the biggest mess I ever saw in my life. Don't worry, it won't kill you. Says you. Hey, isn't there something you want to tell me, something you've been hiding? What do you mean? You're a witch. You're bewitching me. How did you know? I'm thinking about you all the time. I'm even calling you in the middle of meetings. Now, that's something I've never done before. Uh, after all these years, I can't imagine falling into that trap. What trap? Falling in love with a girl half my age. You might think it's love, but actually it's pure, unadulterated lust. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've been sent by the enemy to destroy me. What a terrible thing to say. May I see you tonight? I can't. I have a date. Break it. I can't, darling. They're from out of town. Friends. You sure? I'm sure. Jeffrey, I... I had a call today from Chicago. From my mother. I have to go. Is it serious? I don't know. There's no way of knowing. How long will you be gone? I can't tell. Well, when are you leaving? Monday. <sighs> Darling, why don't you come east with me? Oh, Angela, I may wish I could, but I have an extremely important union negotiating meeting next week. I can't possibly make it. I just wish I could spend some more time with you instead of a stolen hour here or there, always surrounded by people. I, I want to be with you alone. We've got the weekend. We've got the whole weekend ahead of us. Of course, we still have the weekend. You know, I've been so wrapped up in union matters, I just never stopped to think. We could escape all this insanity for a little while, at least. Just together. Yes. We could, we could drive somewhere. Anywhere. I know a marvelous little place. We could be absolutely alone and no one would bother us. What do you think? I'm thinking you make me very happy. Getting washed and beautiful for you. Mm. Wish I was there to help. I wish you were. When are you coming? I'll wait. Oh, honey, that's the big hang-up. There's been a big switch. 
Something good for a change, though. I got the job in San Francisco. And I even got the equipment back. Hey, look, we gotta be at the airport in an hour, so why don't you get dressed, come on over and... I can't, darling. Honey, what do you mean? What are you talking about? This is it. This is the one I want to share. Doug, I'm going away for the weekend. I, I'm leaving tomorrow. <sighs> I want you to come with me. I can't, Doug. Believe me, I can't. Old friends again, right? <sighs> yes. You realize I haven't seen you for an entire week? Next week, darling, I promise you. I'm still here. I think it's lousy. One time I can afford to take you someplace and... Don't, don't be mad. They look no big deal. You do your thing and I'll do mine. And maybe one of these days we'll get our act together. Where are you staying? Jerome Hotel on Powell. I'll call you as soon as I can. Darling, remember I love you. Honey, I love you too. You have guest privileges to the uh, tennis court and the lake. I'll bring up some logs so you folks can have a fire tonight. It can get pretty nippy up here. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, no, thank you, Mr. Thompson, but we don't accept tipping here. <laughs> How do you like that? He even refused money. And it's got a bare rug. I like this place already. Thank heaven. Isn't it perfect? Mm. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, Jack, it's me. What do you mean he wasn't there? Didn't you tell him you're gonna pick him up? I knew there was something wrong when her address didn't check out. All right, well, you hustle on over here. We gotta get on this thing fast.
boy's in trouble. First time in seven years, I don't know where in the hell he is. Ninety foot yacht, a crew of six, and here I am, a galley slave. Say, what did you pack in that thing, anyway? Everything I could steal from the kitchen at the inn. <laughs> Would you like a beer? Oh, yes, my kingdom for a beer. go with our little friend. It was fine. It was perfect. It looks just like an accident, like his girlfriend panicked and ran. Good. Good. Rourke, I need help. What's the problem? His people are, his people are in my apartment right now. I'm sure they know who I am. Yeah, well, how much could they know? I didn't destroy the Bain dossier, and they probably found my passport. Anything else? I can't get out of the country. I have no papers. I need money, a passport. 
Yeah, well, I don't want you coming around here. Uh, you speak fluent Spanish, don't you? Yes. I'll tell you what. I'm going to send Webb down to the drop with an Argentine passport and five bills. Uh, your papers will have to get to you later. How's that? Fine. Rock, listen, I, I didn't think they'd find me so soon. Well, it happens, baby. <laughs> it happens. That's for short and sweet in our business. Just give me the money and the passport. Sure, lady. Mr. Douglas Reynolds, please. Reynolds? Reynolds. Hello? Doug. Yeah. Hey, you pretty one. I tried to call you yesterday. No luck. I thought you were going to be back. Doug, I've got to see you. I, I need you. Honey, what's wrong? You sound kind of funny. Nothing. It's just that, it's just that I miss you. Is that all? Look, why don't you fly up here? We'll have a late dinner. I, I gotta tell you, the whole feature layout. Six pages in the magazine. It's terrific. I can't do that. I'm, I'm at the airport, see, and I'm, my plane's leaving in a few minutes. I'm going to Mexico. Mexico, huh? What's going on? I can't explain now, but my flight's leaving in a few minutes. Well, look, Angela, I'll fly down. We'll meet at your place. No, don't, don't go near my place. Doug, I'm in serious trouble. I'm listening. I'm going to go to a little island called Cozumel. You fly to Acapulco. You go from there to Merida. 30 minutes offshore. There are always fishing boats waiting to make the crossing, see? Go to a hotel called La Lunada. Do you have that? La Lunada. 
Yeah, I hope so. Honey, why should we just split together? We can't do that. <sighs> Believe me, I can't. Will you be there? I'll be there. Oh, good. May I borrow your lipstick? I'm sorry, no. I'll give you five dollars for your lipstick. Sure. Give you fifty dollars for your coat. What's the matter with you anyway? Seventy-five. Honey, you're strange. A hundred. Money will get you anything you want it. Buenas tardes, señorita. ¿Cómo está? ¿Ha llegado un americano que se llama Antonio Trueno? ¿Un americano? Sí. No, señorita. Mire, no hay ni un americano en el hotel. Es que en esta temporada pues, viene muy poca gente por acá. Por eso me gusta tanto. Gracias, me alegro. Adiós. Let alone that you're in my room. <laughs> I don't think they switch too many things around here. They'll probably get around to registering me in about four or five days. I'm so happy you got here. 
You don't know how happy you make me. For a lot of reasons, Doug. Anyway, I feel like it's a whole beginning for me. A beginning? There's a, there's a lot of things you don't know about me, Doug. Well, you want to tell me? I'm afraid to lose you. Just tell me. I had to get away. Some people were trying to kill me. Kill? And if I didn't, they would have eventually. Well, sweetheart, why did you go to the police? I couldn't do that. Why not? They could have helped you. That's what they're there for. Because... Because I kill people for a living. Are you serious? Gracias. So finally I wanted to quit, and I did. You quit? Killing people? Um, it's a bad joke, Angela. It's no joke. How? How did it start? Several years ago, I, I met a man, and I thought I was in love with him. We were everywhere together. He always wanted me with him, even on business trips with clients. I was always there. It wasn't until later that I found out he'd been using me. Using me to set up marks for hits he'd been contracted to do. You see, he was a hitman who'd worked his way up till he was head of an agency for contract killing. When I found out what I'd been doing, I tried to get away. He threatened to kill me unless I helped him do one more job. The one job became two and three. So... All those weekends with old friends. I was paid to kill them. You mean murder them? Murder, kill, call it what you want to. I did it. Oh, Angela, I mean, I don't know if I can handle this, sweetheart. I don't blame you if you want to leave. I but I just thought I had to tell you the truth or we didn't have any chance at all. But this is not something I can just put out of my mind. I don't expect you to put it out of your mind, but I... I thought maybe with time, we... Angela, look. I've, I've got to tell you, I don't know. I mean... I've known you one way, and now, all of a sudden, there's this whole other side I've never seen before. Sweet little Angela. Okay, now turn around. Give me your best side. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay, come on. <laughs> hey, I got some really great shots. Oh, Doug, photograph. Hey, I think that's black coral. Angela, tell me something. What was it like the first time? It was... It was very strange. I... I was sort of... detached. And the second? I was completely detached. 
Was there ever a time, like, that you really en enjoyed it? I mean... It was just a business for me. So why did you quit? Because I'd had it. Just like that? Just like that. Immoral, isn't it? Isn't it? I suppose it is. Then so many things are immoral these days. What's one more person? I love this place, Doug. I wish we could stay here forever. Yeah, that's for sure. I wish I could stay here for a few more days, but I really got to get on back. I really enjoyed it, though. Doug, not you. Yeah, me. Rourke said I could be as good as you someday. He said I shouldn't hang around here too long, otherwise you might guess what's going on. You worked for him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot longer than, well, a long time before you and I ever got together. You know, I gotta tell you, there are a couple of times when, when I really felt like packing it in, calling it quits. You know, kind of like you do with that guy, Bane. But I didn't. I was kind of afraid of what he might do. Rourke's dead. We're free. <laughs> yeah, he said you might say something like that. Try and talk me out of it. They'll never let you go. There'll always be someone to get you. There's no way out. Oh, I'm sorry about this, Angela. But we might as well get it over with. I thought you loved me. <laughs> oh, I do, sweetheart. I do. But this is a nasty little business that we're in. Ah!